Hello. Well, today I'm here to talk about a film that I have already talked about in the past. Um, before uh, this series I, uh, I've been doing, um, made it to episode 100. Um, and so I'm going to re uh, sort of discuss it a, a bit again. Um, maybe not as as at length as I did before, or maybe I will, I don't know. Um, I just want to just talk about it again, and because it's 50 years old, and that movie is THX 1138. Um, this is, of course, the first film George Lucas ever made. It is, you know, not only directed by him, but he wrote it with, uh, Walter Murch, and uh, Francis Ford Coppola was the executive producer on the film. It stars Robert Duvall in his first starring role, which is, I think, a very notable, um, quite notable. Also, um, it's the first time he was actually like a lead, you know, not just starring in that he was like second or third down the <clears throat> on the poster and the credits. It was like he was the lead. He was the top billing, and he plays the titled character. Um, and Donald Pleasance is in this film also. Um, based off of a short film that George Lucas made, which won a lot of awards, got a lot of praise, which is in this on this Blu-ray uh, disc. And if you get a, the, if you have the two disc DVD, you have it also. If you get the DVD or the Blu-ray, you definitely will get it. Um, I know sometimes the DVDs can be like one disc, not necessarily two, but if you want all the special features, I think getting the Blu-ray would be the best bet. Um, it's quite interesting to see uh, the first film that George Lucas got to do. Um, you know, it's science fiction, something that you know a lot of people are familiar with with George Lucas. You know. Star Wars, though that's specifically in a, the, a subgenre of science fiction. You know, it's space opera, more uh, theatrical, uh, with the acting and more melodramatic, with the various events that occurs in Star Wars as well as the writing. Um, here, there isn't a whole lot of dialogue, which, you know, as noted, George Lucas himself isn't a big fan of. Uh, the writing process when it comes to dialogue. Um, of course, it works in his favor uh, when he's written it in, like, in Star Wars. Um, but, you know, I guess because of the melodrama and all. But, you know, with others, people are like, yeah, the, the dialogue is odd or stiff or something about it. It just isn't very good. Where this film, you know, it's very visual. You know, it's a very visual style storytelling, which is, he is excellent at. He's always been excellent at, and I think if you watch this film, you will definitely know, you'll definitely know that and see it. Um, and the dialogue that is there is, works very well also. Um, you know, the, the film is like it, you know, it's set from the future, essentially, um, though the George Lucas looked at it, he's like, you know, this is a, from the future. This is a movie from the future that is gotten to us in like present day essentially is how he kind of wanted it to be looked at and so he made that uh, made this and uh, it wasn't a success it was a flop um warner brothers cut out uh five minutes of his films of, of the film he was upset about that because it's like you know they didn't understand the film at all. They didn't want to understand it. And they're Warner Brothers and they were able to do whatever they wanted. They wanted to cut things out, uh, regardless if it made sense. They could do it because they're the studio and they're, you know, they, could, they, could, they just can. The end. He's just the director. He was given creative control because Francis Ford Coppola essentially just let George Lucas do his thing. He made the movie the way he wanted it, 
put it together the way that he wanted it. And, um, yeah, the, and critics at the time, you know, were quite mixed. But, um, you know, as the years have gone on, people enjoy it more. You know, it's a cult classic. It's a cult following, whichever you would think that would fit in, you know. Uh, I would say it is a cult classic, but I guess just saying it has a cult following it would still fall in that camp. But I guess sometimes people make a distinction that there are there are two different things. You know, they're not the same. And yeah, it's interesting how some people try to make a distinction between cult classic and cult following. But I consider it a cult classic. Um, like, I gained a cult following, like, after Star Wars, and then it has since become a, you know, a classic film. And uh, a lot of the elements of Star Wars, of, not Star Wars, but of George Lucas's career of, like, his style of directing and making films is in, in this movie. Granted, it's a lower budget, but even with that lower budget, it's still really excellent. It's incredible. It's fantastic. Um... The acting is incredible, the writing is really well done, for, and the sound design is excellent, the music. Everything about this film is uh, incredible. Um, I've always enjoyed the films George Lucas has made, um, uh, and this is no exception. Um, I actually... Uh, after Star Wars and the, those films that George Lucas has directed, I think this is my uh, the next in line after those four Star Wars films he directed, honestly. And then um, American Graffiti. But I love American Graffiti. American Graffiti is an excellent movie. You know, I, I watched that when I was a kid. Loved it. Of course, Star Wars, as I've said many times on, on here before. But THX 1138 is an excellent movie. You know, there's it's like an Orwellian type film, you know, with Big Brother and, you know, people are conditioned and controlled, essentially, and they have to use, take, uh, you know, pills every day and they can't have emotion, can't have sex, can't do this or that. Um, essentially, you're a robot and Ironic, uh, THX Level 38 is, uh, works in creating robots, which are essentially like the police, to help enforce and ensure uh, the society that they live under in, TH in THX Level 38, that world. They continue to they, uh, make machines to help keep people in line and keep maintenance and all of this, it's it's a very uh, fascinating movie, and in some ways, uh, people are like, you know, how like look at like oh, 1984 is real, or like it's come true in aspects in our life, like with government and all, and listening in and drawing various aspects of people's lives. You know, you could say, I guess, a similar sentiment about THX Level 38, various things in this film are also true to a good extent. Um, perhaps not completely to the degree of THX 1138 of people just being mindless drones believing and just doing what they're said and told. Um, but there are, I guess, you know, a number of people who are like that. Um, so that's just fascinating, obviously, uh, uh, to me and to so many others uh, who have watched this and just sort of look at the world and how there's various things that this movie says and the book and the film of 1984 that they've said and how in certain aspects uh, there's a lot of truth to what was said in these works and... Uh, George Lucas said it was like a, what I, I, he made that it was like a commentary on the 
way people were living in 1970. It wasn't really about the future. Yeah, it's interesting how there's some parallels between this film and now. and Whether or not there were... Uh, it was saying something about that time. You know, I it was not alive in 1970. Um, but, you know, hear various people, you know, you'll, you'll hear people say, yes, that's true, like, some of the stuff was going on, and no, that wasn't true, and this and that. You know, regardless of what it was, a, if it was a commentary, uh, at, all, at least that's how George Lucas perceived it, at the very least. You know, he saw it, and this was his response and answer, I guess, or not, maybe not necessarily answer, but this is like what, how he saw things, and, um, you know, this, uh, this is an incredible film, um, and, uh, 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 uh seeing its 50th anniversary, um, and re-watching it again, it's, it's incredible, and I, uh, I love it. I uh, loved it from the moment I first saw it um, years ago, and uh, just makes me appreciate George Lucas's films even more. You know, I love Star Wars. Love the Star Wars films he made, wrote, produced, and uh, or directed. Um, I just. Uh, well, the other films he's done, you know, uh, of the Indiana Jones films, which he wrote and produced, um, and so many others, but, you know, in terms of like, in directing, you know, this is an incredible movie. Um, some say it's an underrated film to an extent, even though it is a cult, has a cult following, is a cult classic, whatever, and still there are people who haven't seen this movie. Um, and if you haven't seen it, I'd say give it a watch. Um, you should, fi you should be able to find the DVD and Blu-ray, or the Blu-ray of it, uh, yeah, uh, uh, at a fairly decent price. Not expensive anymore, it's been out for many years. This Blu-ray, uh, when did this come out? 2010? And I got this a, a few years back, and this was like, uh, yeah, $10. Uh, I got uh, the DVD years prior and loved it. And um, just for whatever reason, kept putting off the Blu-ray. Um, I finally got it, and I'm glad I did, because it's a great Blu-ray. Um, get, get to see the original short film that George Lucas made called Le Electric Labyrinth THX 1138 4EB. There's some documentaries about like the years of American zoetrope, which George Lucas has often said, like, you know, that was Francis Ford Coppola's company. He made it specifically for, you know, filmmakers, small filmmakers to come and make their movies. Like indie filmmakers could make their movies and away from the studio, and if anything, the studio would just distribute their films, and that would be it. Um, but with their response to this film, um, that didn't really happen, and as a result, Francis Ford Coppola had to do the Godfather trilogy, um, uh, in order to try and salvage or save it, and get it out of bankruptcy, essentially. He says, and I pretty much bankrupt, uh, American Zoetrope, and uh, Francis had to go make a, uh, The Godfather, which was a, one of the worst experiences I've ever saw a director ever go through. Like, the studio hated everything he did. Uh, that's my George Lucas impression. Probably a very bad one. I could probably do a better one, but... But that's what it, essentially he was saying with this movie. Like, it's because of this movie not doing well. Coppola had to do The Godfather had a terrible time making that. Um, and a few years after this release, uh, George Lucas came out with American Graffiti, and he, uh, you know, and Coppola did The Godfather, and uh, that was a big hit, and it was how Lucas was able to then make uh, American Graffiti. 
but as time has gone on, people re uh, of course rewatch this um, and love it. You know, it's an incredible movie. Um, yeah, this is just a fantastic film. It's uh, one of my favorite films of all time. Um, and I might talk about some of my, my favorites later on. Expand upon my list of my favorite films. Or um, this may uh, be a part of it. Um, but I love this movie. Um, it also has a, a production featurette called Bald, where they shave the heads of the actors and actresses. Because all the, all the women who are in this movie are also shaved uh, bald. To this conformity society um, that there is, there's commentary by George Lucas and Walter Murch. Um, theater of Noise Experience, isolated sound effect track, master session, uh, a keypod gallery showcasing uh, Walter Murch's pioneering work, and uh, and also the other uh, documentary is a. Uh, RFI from the Future, The Making of THX-138, which is an incredible documentary about this movie. Uh, if you really like uh, uh, enjoy this movie and you like the uh, and you like uh, learning about how movies are made and specific films like this movie, you know, this is a great uh, documentary along with the uh, Legacy of Filmmakers, Early Years of American Zoetrope. Uh, those are two incredible documentaries. Um, and, yeah. Uh, I love this movie. I'm glad to be able to uh, talk about it again. Um, and it's been some time since I also saw this film. So I was happy to rewatch it. And, like, uh, it was 50th anniversary. So not only should I just rewatch it again, because it's 50 years old this year, but. It would be cool to make a video about it. And, uh, yeah. Uh, it's really all I have to say. Um, have you seen this movie? Uh, have you heard of it? Uh, if you haven't seen it, are you interested at all? Or not? Um, and if you have seen it, uh, you know, do you like it? Do you dislike it? Um, yeah, uh, I love George Lucas's films. Um, he he's an incredible filmmaker. Um, it'd be great to see the other projects he's working on. Like he's gonna just do small movies, basically now that he's not making any more big blockbusters. Uh, but yeah, and also this film is fairly short. It's uh, eighty eight minutes, so. Within 90 minutes, you can see this movie, and hopefully that's not 88 minutes too long for people. Um, but yeah, uh, with that, I will uh, leave you, and I shall uh, uh, wish you all a great day, great weekend, and a great week. See you all next time.